In the history of humanity, we have seen many great leaders, leaders that are highly motivated, passionate, leaders that are visionaries, leaders that bring society to a higher level. And most of these leaders are charismatic leaders. That is to say, they are gifted in leadership. In fact, it is said that most leaders are born, not so much nurtured. That does not mean to say those who are born with the gift of leadership does not require nurturing. Of course, they do. But what is important is that leadership is a gift given by God to the person who has been entrusted with positions of leadership. A great leader is not simply a charismatic leader that is able to change the world, that is able to be successful in leading organizations and society. The greatness of a leader always lies in humility. The leader is not about himself. The leader is always about the community, the continuity of progress in the community. So a leader is always thinking about leaders after him. If a leader is successful in his own right, at the end of his death, everything will die with him. He has not passed on the legacy. So a great leader is always thinking about forming leaders after him. It is not about himself. It is about ensuring that the organization, the community, will grow from strength to strength. And that is why you need to have a continuity of leaders. That's why when a leader works only for himself, he dies with whatever he has started. And so this question of mentoring in leadership is very important in life, whether in secular organization, in church organizations, even in the family. Every parent is called to mentor their children. Leadership is not about a leader himself. Leadership is to make ourselves redundant so that others can take over our position, so that others can continue the work we have started. That's why a great leader is always giving birth to new organizations, to new movements. He doesn't stay in one place. He is always moving on. Most of us, we are thrust onto leadership. I myself never thought that I would be a bishop, not even a priest. But situations lead us into leadership. And that is the reason why leaders are chosen, appointed by God. Not so much by men. If you want to choose leadership, it is because something is driving you. Some of us are driven by selfish ambition. They will never make good leaders. It's only leaders who are driven by God, planting in them a passion, a heart for the people, not about himself. When you are conscious that you are appointed by God, you will work hard. You will continue. Because you are appointed by God, God will qualify those whom he has chosen. Some of us feel that we are not ready for leadership. We're not good enough. No one is good enough. No one is capable enough. But we never know the power of God. And that is why it is so true. And for us, we are dependent on the grace of God. God will give us the gifts. He will supply us the gifts necessary for leadership when we have been chosen by him. To be a leader means to suffer. 
That is part of leadership. If you are not ready to suffer, be, be misunderstood, be rejected, be slandered, be accused wrongly, you cannot be a leader. A leader suffers for his people because he loves them. When we loved, we will suffer. Are you truly a leader? If you cannot suffer, it's because you don't love the people. You love yourself. But if you truly love your people, you suffer for them, just as parents would suffer for their children. Let us pray that we be good mentoring leaders. When you have a clear conscience, you'll be at peace because you have done what you have could as a leader. And the rest, we just surrender them to God.